Did it start? <laughs> Are we on? As it started, Somebody's answering the, the, the phone rang. Thank you for joining us for Q&A. And you can't hear it. We got fancy music. Is it the same fancy music or new fancy music? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's my version of it. Or with a cold getting better. On the... Yeah. Your face is alarming. That, that Whatever that face you just made was. <laughs> See, with this, it sounded more normal because I can hear myself and the music. I'm sure. For you, it just looks really concerned. Like, I have hired this guy <laughs> to sing for our church. <laughs> no, I was impressed, actually. Like, had I tried to... Emulate that, it would be just awful. <laughs> Thank mean, you're, you. You're hitting actual notes. <laughs> <'cause of laughs> Thank you for joining us for QA with PK, PR, and PG. Notice how I use my last name instead of my first name. If you're not sure why, we're going to leave it there. <laughs> it's QA, and while our gifting of prophecy is, is limited within the the, the gift of prophecy functions in a limited fashion um, within the three of us. Yes. We do not believe that we will get through all of these questions, but we will do our best. There's, there's some simple ones, and then there's several that are very complex. So hop on. Let us know where you're watching from. The band is back together, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and hop on for myself. I'm going to kill this music, and then I'm going to slide from this screen over to that screen, which then makes Pastor Randy smile. Look. Yeah, now, now we can yeah. see. Once I was blind, but now I now see. Now I Whee! see. Here it is. I'm going to refresh fresh the page. And there we are. We is leave. Uh-oh. So there we go. It says we is leave. And there's human beings watching. There. There Look we at are. So we, we do exist. We it's do. not a dream. I'm a real boy. I, I, I am awake, and this is happening. All right. Yes. All right feel better with Mark, the assurance of that. Mark Oliphant and I just became friends online. Hmm. He serves in our facilities team. I actually think that, I don't know whether I gave Mark his first tour or was just one of the first people that he met. Maybe Mark, you can elaborate. Did I? Am I thinking correctly that I gave, I gave you your <laughs> first tour when you came to FCF? Is that possible? I'm remembering that correctly. I think you met him, and then you introduced him to me, and then I took him for a tour. I think. Now, is oh, no, he related no. to Timothy Oliphant? I think they are brothers. Okay. They are brothers. Oh. They don't look anything alike, though. They don't. Coincidentally. Okay. <laughs> and Mark serves on our safety team. Okay. He's a good egg. A little cracked, but a good egg. Hmm. Victor, what's up, buddy? Victor's in Middletown. Ross, Middletown. Middletown making a strong appearance. <laughs> I, I once Mark, was a Middletowner. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Hubbard is in... How do you say it again? Cure, I think we said cure. last week. Sure. Didn't Beach. we say cure? And Bruce before? Bryant. Man, Middletown is coming in hot. <laughs> yes, you did give me our first tour. I did drive by last December, and you did give me a tour. Timothy Oliphant is my cousin. How about that? Is that for real? It sounds real. I, I think he's being serious. Is he really? I Check think he is. Out. Miss Phoebe. Well, Miss remember, we had, we, had, we, had, we had the one girl. Oh, he's an actor, a good actor. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Remember we had the uh, was the lady David Hasselhoff. Who, yes, yes, Chris Hasselhoff. Chris Hasselhoff. Chris, and David Chris Hasselhoff. was her uncle, right? I think it was. It was Before he ate the sandwich, I cannot on, tell whether on, you on are um, <laughs> uh, using your phalanges to yank on my lower extremity, or no, this is real. <laughs> pulling my this leg. Is, this is real. <laughs> no, 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 no. We had real celebrity David Hasselhoff's people. niece went yeah. to FCS. Yes. yes. Check that out. Yeah. I bet you she's listening even today and she'll chime in. And I would affirm, love it if she did. Affirm this statement. Your uncle became a traveling. Do you know this? That he ended up with a music career. No. no you didn't know? <laughs> My David, uh, yes, Hasselhoff. man. I did know that. He was quite the thing in Germany. He, uh, th that's exactly oh. right. With these massive. And you would look at these the venues that he would play in. Yeah. I remember thinking, who is that? Until David? the day he ate the sandwich on camera. What, 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 <laughs> Everything went there. You, you didn't see the video where he was no. drunk and eat oh. the sandwich and it's dropping all out of his mouth oh, and he's no. mumbling incoherently oh. and arguing with his daughter. Oh, it was it was wow. the turning point. Unbelievable. By the way, that's an idea. The turning point. Point. Oh, that would be a good Ooh, sermon that series. That would be a great series. Maybe even a part one and part two. Maybe. Maybe. Like. Maybe. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it some thought. Give it some okay. thought. See All what right. you come up with for Sunday. All right.
we could kill the Falderall and mm-hmm. roll straight in so to lot. these questions. And the first one, I mean, you got to hit him with the first one off the bat. Because. Which one is that? I'm excited about the first one. Well, I'm, I'm not able to see it without my. Oh, okay. uh, it bio, says, my bio, my bio yeah. is once saved, always saved, scriptural? Can I, can I add, a, can I add a, a, a caveat question to it? Yes. It depends what you mean when you say someone Save. is. Say, yeah, that, oh. that really is important. It becomes semantics, doesn't it? Yeah, it, re- it really is important. Um, you parried it a prayer? My, say it again. You parried it a prayer? <laughs> parried a prayer. Yeah. Parried a prayer. You came forward. You uh, were dunked in Asked water, Jesus perhaps. Jesus to come into your heart. And, and he's either there or he's not. <laughs> I, asked, I no, invited him in. All, all, all kidding aside, um, it is a serious question. And scripture is clear, in my opinion, but it's not clear experientially the way people tend to think of it. Okay, people tend to think of it in terms of like you sign a contract, the contract is sealed. Stamped. And yep. you know, that that's it. Um, scripture talks about once saved, always saved, if you want to use that term, in that when I authentically put my trust in Christ and become his follower, uh, I am saved, I am being saved, I will be saved. Okay, okay so uh, I am saved if you want to look at it from the standpoint that God forgives my sins. He gives me the gift of everlasting life. I'm his child. I'm a member of his, the body of Christ and so forth. Yeah. So my position is secure. Yeah. Um, I am being saved because he came to save us from our sins, not the penalty, some supposed penalty of sin. So I'm being saved as, you know, the spirit of God enables me to see what sin is and to put off the old self and put on the new. And I will be saved in that when Christ comes, returns, establishes his kingdom and the new heaven and new earth, I'll eventually be saved from the very presence or even the possibility of sin forever. Yeah. So so saved, the real question, though, is about can you lose your salvation? That's what they're yeah. really looking at. And it's a really tricky thing because it's not so much can you lose it. The question is, do you have it? Mm. Say it again for the people in the back. Ooh. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Turn your volume up. <laughs> Check the batteries in your hearing aids. <laughs> well, the, again, the question is, is not so much can you lose it, but do you have it? And when I say have it, I'm think I, 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 we need to think in terms of I'm, I entered into a relationship that yeah. will never end because Christ has revealed the glory of God, the goodness of God, the trustworthiness of God. He has now won my trust forever so i use the term i follow him fully freely and forever yeah so when you look at it like that it's not this kind of a mechanistic contractual kind of a thing that's laid out in scripture but it is the um, entrance into a relationship with christ that'll never end so if you know you trust christ yes you're you're saved and secure you're you're as though you've been in heaven ten thousand years but if you're looking at this thing from a mechanistic standpoint that i just want to make sure i did what what's required you know, I just want to make sure, you know, the elevator goes up instead of going down. That's questionable if you understand, like you had said earlier, what, what is salvation? What, mm-hmm. what, what does it mean to be saved? Yeah. Uh, there has to be, for example, a real desire to be rescued from sin. If I don't really want to be rescued from sin, well, Jesus said, you know, he came to rescue us from our sins. And so what, what is it that I'm being saved from? What mm-hmm. is it that I, that I want to be saved from? Do I just want to be saved from some... Um, eternity and eternal torment you know, I mean, which is a good thing to be saved from or or do i want to be saved from what jesus says i'm in most danger of which is sin present tense actual sin not some supposed penalty of sin yeah so. well and and i think that the issue becomes have you it's it's action right the relationship is demonstrated by action so have you put your trust in christ to become his follower that is demonstrated by how you live so if you're not if you're not actually following that if your will is not surrendered to Christ's will, then you you should not have confidence in your relationship with Christ if that is not in place. And yeah. that's what you see. A lot of times people use this question, in my experience mm-hmm. with this question, um, was one of the first times we had a, a, a large group of Baptist students that their, their church did not have a youth ministry, but we had a, a pretty big youth ministry at uh, my first pastorate in Wilmington, Delaware. And Several of the students held to this, and their perspective was that they could do whatever they wanted. Mm -hmm. They used it as like a get-out-of-jail-free card, and it literally was confusing a lot of our our youth in in the ministry, and they would think, oh, man, I I, I did my thing, I parroted my prayer, and I would try to take them to Scripture and say, no. Um, Now, at that point, I still... still, 
I, I don't like just even the structure of the sentence for me bothers mm -hmm. me. Do you yeah. feel that way? I do. The I once do. saved, I, I always it, but, saved. But yeah. What they're yeah. trying to articulate, I, I think it's just the question itself can create more confusion in asking it that way. Have you put your trust in Christ and become his follower? Is your will surrendered to his? If you, if you have not, actually, can you lose the trust that you've put in Christ? Well, he would have to do something for you to lose that trust. And all he's ever going to do, all he's ever going to do, is show you more and more who he is. And the more you trust him, the more you realize you can trust him. So the thought of actually losing trust in Christ is a really challenging thing to actually get your mind around. But have, I think the issue when someone has been a Christ follower, I'm talking more than I planned on. When someone <laughs> is, the challenge is when someone professes to be a Christ follower, even in high levels of church leadership, and then turns apostate, the question is, is that person still a Christian? Or were they not saved to even start? Did they ever actually put their trust in Christ and become his follower? There's so many people. Yeah, and, and that's where you get into the complexity of uh, I can believe all the truth about I Christ. I can know the Word of God. I can teach the Word of God, preach the Word of God, and still not authentically have trusted in Christ. Yes. And, and that's why when someone goes into apostasy, there's always this conundrum. Were they ever saved and now they've walked away from Christ or were they never saved? I lean toward they were probably never saved, yeah. okay? Meaning that they had the information, but they never really authentically trusted him and engaged in the, the establishment yep. of a relationship with him. You, you uh, at the very beginning of the conversation, you said that a lot of people are trusting in certain uh, experiences. You know, it might be that they walk forward or they ask Jesus into their heart. And it's kind of these climactic experiences, but that's not the right image. Right. A better image would be to look at um, something like I join the military and I'm accepted. Well, now I'm going to be a part of that for tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, next four years, whatever it is, or getting married. You say I do and then you enter into a relationship with the person that continues on. So those are, those are better images as opposed to I sign this contract of some sort or I ask Jesus into my heart, which is completely unbiblical uh, and those kinds of things. Okay, I'll probably, we'd probably be dismissed no, but, and But none of the, just to be clear, none of those things, if, if as a marker in your walk with Christ, there's a point when you came to an altar or you, or you, you said a prayer, like those things aren't necessarily, they're not negative. And as, as Christians, I mean, you even see in Scripture, they would build altars to things as a monument in their mind. Those aren't bad. Those don't mean that you're not a Christian. Right. Those are just not the evidence that you are a Christian. The evidence is that your will is surrendered to his will. Right? Exactly. And, 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 and to, go, to go back, sometimes people have came forward at a ser service or asked Jesus into their heart, even though it's terrible theology. But, but they really yeah, were making a trusted. decision to put their trust in him and become his follower. Yeah. They maybe not, well, had not been given the good information or clear information, but nevertheless, they, they're, the sincerity of their heart was there. Come and, on. That, and that's what God looks at. Come on. All right. Here we go. All right. We I was really... going to add to it, but I think we went long enough, so I probably don't need to, right? Okay. <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> I'm just going to say that I feel like so much, like the, the critical issue is do I want to keep on sinning? Like, there or not? Like, if I trust yeah. Christ, I don't want to sin anymore. And right. yet these kinds of questions, not that this person intended that, no, no, but right. often it's like, well, can I be saved and still keep on sinning? Yes. Because I've really got some sin well, that I like, and I'd like to keep on that. So. <laughs> You know, so yes. the issue really comes down to I want to not sin anymore. Am I struggling? Am I yes. fighting against it? I don't want this. Mm -hmm. that's what the, is the per that's, that is yeah. the biggest thing. What is the purpose of the question? Why is the question phrased that way? What is, what is the, in church world, why do we use that expression? Yeah, yeah. And I don't mean to imply that this person has no. that intent no, at no, all, no, but so now, often the question now, will I, be I, I will throw one thing in. There, there are some people that by nature, well, we're all, let me rephrase it, we're all insecure to differing yeah. degrees. But yeah. some people are extremely insecure, and so this is very important to them. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're fearful every day. Yeah. You know, they're the type that they're rededicating God, and rededicating, and coming myself. to the altar. All the things that I did, all the things I don't know that I did. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, next question. Do you think the theory of the Antichrist coming from the Muslim world versus coming from the revived Roman Empire actually could be the same thing given that the Muslim influx in Europe? I'll let you take this one. It's an, it's a, it's an interesting <laughs> question, but my answer would, would be no if you're thinking in terms of, um, you know, the, um, the Roman Empire being the hub from which mm -hmm. the Antichrist would come. 
Uh, I, I really think Scripture indicates more that he's going to come from Actually. Alexander the Great's empire, uh, which would incorporate some of what became the Roman mm -hmm. Empire, but not all, all of it altogether. But we, we probably don't need to ponder too deeply those questions because mm -hmm. when, when he comes on the scene, I, I have a feeling he's going to be rather unmistakable. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> is this the guy? Is it nothing? All right. Thoughts on the red heifers? Well, they're there. They're ready to go. Back up, back up. What's a red heifer? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, before the temple can be rebuilt and the priesthood reestablished. Just part of end times um, has to take place for the yeah, return of Christ. Yes. Um, we, we believe scripture clearly teaches the temple will be rebuilt. Animal sacrifices will be reestablished. And before the priesthood and the animal sacrifices are reestablished, there has to be a cleansing, okay, since the yeah. temple was destroyed. So there's this formula given, I believe it's in Numbers 23, but I, I could be wrong on that chapter where um, you have to take a red heifer, you have to completely fry it, you know, until there's nothing left but ashes. It, not necessarily fry it, but you have to bake it up or do something to cook it up. Mm -hmm. And then you take the ashes and you cleanse everything with the ashes. You realize so, how good the temple smelled? Like back I, in... I bet it did. But, no, like, like good barbecue all the time. <laughs> I've been going to worship a lot. So here's the deal. These things have not been around forever <laughs> since the destruction of the temple. We now have them. Israel mm -hmm. has them. They have cleared, to my knowledge, they cleared the time frame. It's two years. I think they have to watch them and uh, to see if they develop any blemishes or like white hair or anything like that. They have not. So now it's just a question of when will they sacrifice these animals, burn these animals, and then protect the ashes for the future uh, mm -hmm. use of them. So, but, but the point is, is that this is actually happening. Yeah. First time in, in history, you know, since the destruction of the temple. So, again, it kind of moves us in this prophetic frame of mind that, that it is highly likely we're, we're close to the return of Christ. Yeah. I'm curious. I don't want to dwell on that first question. I'm just curious if, if they got <laughs> us, if they understood what we were saying. I think they do. You think? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. Okay. Do you remember <laughs> the name of the series where you discuss the different misconceptions people have about God? The one I remember is Vending Machine God. Thanks. Yeah, I, I do remember having a number of those, those descriptions of God. I don't mm -hmm. remember the series. Uh, was that before remember. me? No, no. This was, this, actually, I don't think it was even a series. I think it was a recent message. And you had them oh. in the message. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think it has it actually been message. within the past year or two. Within a message, Anybody but, out there remembers? Drop it in the. But chat, I definitely lose the different. Track. Yeah. It, it was like an illustration within the message. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you remember what message now, it is. I did do a series way back. Way back. Yeah, uh, I remember about that. About our differing mm -hmm. images of God and how mm -hmm. they they mold and shape us and, and Yeah. Whoever yeah. asked that question, if you're if you want to chime in, how how long ago was it? So we know. Yeah, it was Courtney. That would help. Courtney Ray. So. Oh, Miss Courtney. Yeah. Yeah, Courtney. yeah. If you're thinking of something within the last several months, but to year versus one that was years back. But I, yeah, I think it's been within the seen. past two years. Yeah. If I had to guess, maybe okay. three. I think during our conversation about once saved, always saved, Steve Swint said, "Count the marbles every day." Right, Pastor Ken. Bam. Bam. <laughs> dun dun. That's good. Mark from Knoxville. What's shaking? Pablo. What's shaking? Miss. Carolyn Holbrook, what's up? And then Steve Sorrell, who we got to meet with yesterday. Steve, congratulations. His anniversary is today. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Congrats to you, Miss Linda. All right, I'm going to keep rolling. All righty. Uh, this person is doing a Bible study on Revelation, and in it, it mentions that in Genesis 3.22, God says, Behold, the man has become like us. So I'd like to know who, who he's mm. referring to when he says, like us, who is us. I think we've dealt with this one We before. We did. Um, you know, the answer that's usually given is, well, it was the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. That certainly could be. The other answer is, is it could have been the divine counsel. There's mention of a divine counsel in Scripture. We kind of see these elders in the book of Revelation chapter 6, um, they appear to be some higher level of leader. God has delegated leadership positions to them. And um, he could have been referring to the divine counsel, could have been referring to the Father, Son, Spirit just within mm -hmm. himself. So that seems to be the answer. All right. e either one of those, or maybe all of the above. It could have been all. Well, we're doing good. We have a full seven minutes left. All right. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so someone said they heard a person stated that God revealed himself to man in human likeness a few times in the Old Testament. Is this accurate? And if so, where can I find these references? Oh, yeah, yeah <clears throat> there, there's actually a number of references in the Old Testament, but, but one easy one to find is Genesis chapter 18. I won't give it away. You just read it. Uh, hopefully this person's listening. Just read it, mm -hmm. and you'll see it's a rather amazing portion of Scripture where God appears in human form. So. And that would be Jesus. Appearing. Yeah, uh, all, all pre those pre-incarnate pre appearances of Christ, uh, Christ before he came and became the man Jesus of, so, of Nazareth. So like the... Think of uh, the angel of the Lord references? Well, well no, I was going to say... Those are tricky. I was going to say like a, a theophany is considered that, right? Mm -hmm. But is, is him showing up in both... Because like people would refer to the burning bush, for example, as a theophany, mm -hmm. a... a a representation of God would him showing up as the yeah, angel Christophany. be a Christophany. Yeah, that's the separation. I mean, if you really want to get all, I what I do clearly, I do <laughs> clearly, I do. So a, a theophany is more often when it is a specific God in in a form of nature or a, an object, and a Christophany would be him in in human form. That would be my thought. Yeah, and, okay. And, and there's a lot. Of, I mean, whole books have been written about written the angel it. of the Lord. Is it always the pre-incarnate Christ, or, or is it not? It's, it's tough to say in every case. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it seems like most of the time it, it appears that it is. It seems to imply that, yeah. The pre-incarnate Christ. All right. Dun, dun. We're rolling right along. Oh, yeah. Can you please explain the redemption of the firstborn sons in Numbers 3, 40 to 51, and how it relates to the gospel? Uh, uh, the closest we can come to relating to the gospel is when it says in First Peter, what is it, one seventeen? You have not been redeemed with silver and gold as in the way of your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, the lamb without blemish, and so forth. Uh, the principle of redemption is woven all through the Old Testament, and it's this notion that there is value in humanity, and, and human beings are going to have to somehow be ransomed by God himself. And so you have all these different images. That, that, that portion of Scripture is really unusual. You, um, you, what it is is okay. So, so like when the plague came through Egypt, and the firstborn died. All right. So now they're about to establish the priesthood, and so the firstborn God claimed they're all His because the firstborn would have died. And so He says, "Okay, the firstborn are all mine." But instead of the firstborn being the priesthood, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go with you Levites because when push came to shove, you guys were ready to fight for the Lord. Remember the whole golden calf incident, you know? Yeah. So now you got the situation where they're counting, and they count like, okay, I don't know, it's like 23,000 or something like that. But there's 273 or something odd number that don't fit into this. And so it's like, okay, well, what are we going to do with these guys? Well, we've got to give five shekels for each one of those. They, they've got to be redeemed. They've got to be ransomed. So it's one of those portions of Scripture. It's like there's probably more going on here. Again, God is so mathematically inclined. I think one day when all the lights are turned on, we're going to say, oh, that was all there right before our eyes, and we didn't get it at all. Uh, I'll give you an example of guys that see things that are there but, but are easily missing. If you were to watch Messiah 2030, version 1, version 2, version 3, you will be shocked at what these guys have found embedded in Scripture. I'm not saying that they're 100% accurate, but I tend to think they are. So point being, I, I wish I could say more about that, mm -hmm. but it's just establishing the principle of redemption. First Peter 1 does um, talk about it. You know, we weren't, in other words, what was it that persuaded us back to God? What was it that persuaded us to leave the slavery of sin and to turn to, to our God and trust? Well, it was the revelation of God in Christ on the cross. It, it was his sacrificial death that spiritually ransomed us, not paying some payment. Uh, there's, there's nothing to support that. But Are they trying, you think they're trying to imply that no. numbers is that? No, no, I, I, I don't think so. But, um, but, it, but, but there is, a, there is a, a, a point that there's a valuation. I mean, five shekels, I don't even know, it's probably, it was just, no. shekels of silver, it's like, Maybe fifteen hundred bucks a day uh, today. So, are you saying that those guys are only worth fifteen hundred bucks? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think that was the point. The point was that somehow God was going to uh, offer Himself. It, that was the price that was going to be required. The revelation, the sacrificial revelation of God in Christ. That price would have to be paid to regain the trust 
the lost trust of humanity when Satan, satanic slander was established in the heart of humanity. So. But it is, it's odd. It's very odd. There, there's lots of, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, there's lots of odd portions of Scripture with tremendous detail. And you know that detail probably has more of a meaning yeah, than what we understand. Yeah. Now, please, do not think that it has some illusory meaning that is not covered in the New Testament. Right. Okay, so you got to read the Old Testament through the lens of the New Testament. It says that now all the fullness of God has been revealed in bodily or physical form in Christ. So we know the truth now about God, and so we have to look through that lens back at the Old Testament to, to rightly understand it. So don't be thinking that there's some kind of hidden formulas in the Old mm -hmm. Testament. Oh, my goodness, if you don't find this, you're lost. You know? yeah. That's what I'll think a lot of times. What I'll say to my house, is, this, is, this, is there an illusory meaning to this? Like, I'll say illusory. <laughs> Pastor Kim, <laughs> always. I use illusory a lot. You know, you bust my chops anytime I use a big word. Which yeah. seems a, your yeah. grasp of the yeah. language—it's uh, throw reductive and then you're like reductive. <laughs> no, you adjectival. Uh, oh, adjectival. 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 He won't let one slip by. Just let that it go was on, that man. was great, man. I'm looking for some way, some time to, to use that in. word. Yeah. Hey, I just want to point out that Lewis Haynes is watching from the coast of Greece. Oh, Lewis. Wow. Lucky dog. God bless wow. you, my friend. That, Unbelievable. That's amazing. What's, what's the temperature there? What's it like? Sunny and 75, I'll bet. Now, you've uh, actually been there, haven't you? No, I've never been to Greece. Okay. No, I would love to go. Tammy Stein from Thermont. I, remember I mentioned for you to tell your husband I said hi. He said you didn't tell him I said hi earlier. <laughs> and he's, I think he's actually mowing this afternoon. Um, Mandy Lowe, what's shaking? Pastor Randy will be doing a series soon on this subject. What Which subject? Is the subject? Uh, maybe Turning Point, when we said Turning Point. Did when I just see something fly by up there? Yeah. Or was that, hopefully it was. A it bird? Was, well, I don't. We have had birds in here before. Ooh. And something just flew past up there in the clear story. Um, could all right. Be, could be a bumblebee. Faith, do you mind going I to get that for I killed a really us? big fly Seriously, the other day. The thing had the wingspan but, of a pterodactyl. <laughs> 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 Melissa, let us know which series you're referring to. I think she's saying when we said Turning Point, ooh, that would be a good series. Because oh, okay. that was early on. <laughs> okay. so. You have, have done a series on Turning Point before. I'm doing it's a coming series. coming up this Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> 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 well, is this part two or part one? No, I'm kidding. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> I know. It does sound like another, when you turn no, point, tip, that, tipping, tipping, tipping point. point. Tipping Point. That tipping that Point you did. That wasn't a series, but Perhaps, he kept saying yeah. Tipping Point in the yeah, series. Tipping Point I did, that was all from First Timothy chapter 3, I believe. Yeah, and the series was called something else, but you kept talking about the Tipping Point. Okay, there you go. Yeah. yeah. And, and it was it was early in my tenure, but you had, it was basically about the, 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 the crux of what was taking place. Okay, anyways. Yeah, he was Mandy still recording Mine at home then. I'm not, I'm not sure what she's referring to there. Mine too. Because it was. Oh, your anniversary is today, Mandy. Oh. Is that true? Oh wow! Oh my gosh! Happy happy anniversary to you and Charlie. I'm squeezed for I know, you. It's hard when they Love answer. We guys. said something and we didn't. I know. Catch we it. we were talking. <laughs> we're, like, we're waxing we're eloquent like, over here. Uh, Mark, curious what the pastor's favorite books oh, in the Bible. I happen to know uh, what Pete's is. It's the Song of Solomon. <laughs> 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 the next break week. That's what I'm teaching on. The whole book. He's, no, he's going to do it. it. <laughs> Your legs are like a tower. Nose is like a tower. Legs like cedar trees. And I'm going to illustrate it. With <laughs> and that's where you almost have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I rejoice in the anyways. Yeah. Here we go. We're going to keep it going here. Have you ever taught Never. from Song of Solomon? I've taken Will you? one isolated verse. It's uh, chapter 8, verse 7. It's like love is stronger than death. It sounds like a good line. You know? And that was yeah. it. <laughs> that's it. I can't take anything else out of that book and preach on it. <laughs> Um, my favorite book is actually, I love the book of James. I think the book of James mm. is phenomenal. There's some, so much about it, I don't want to elaborate, but it's a very good book. And the first chapter of James is just like, there's like a, the first five to seven verses, you could teach yeah. a message on every single verse, like standalone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Pastor Randy. I don't have a favorite book. No, I, 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 I honestly don't. Colossians for me. Colossians. I love the, all the, the beginning church. things about Christ and uh, and then the prayers <laughs> of Paul. Uh, Hello, Miss Sandy. Gabby Dixon, do you believe in the, the spiritual gifts are given to given to us today as it says in Corinthians 12, 
Yes, I oh, do. Oh, okay. And we, well, we, we probably don't want to answer too many questions from there because we got people wow, who submit it. I yeah, know, I'm being so, harsh. I mean, so mean. I know. She's so Stop judgmental. yelling at Well, we do have 15 questions. I know. Do we <laughs> ever actually put our trust in her? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> we once passed nope. your campaign. All right. Okay. Could you remind us? Oh, we did. Oh, okay. You you mentioned three books recently. You you mentioned in a message series. Can Reflections of the one. Existence of God, Mere Christianity. Yeah, I, I, I saw that question, and I cannot think of the third one. I'm sorry. So if anybody else can yeah. remember that. What, what was it? Say it again. There were three books he mentioned in a message, Mere Christianity, Reflections of the Ex Existence of God, and then apparently he had mentioned three. Screwtape letters? Mm-mm. No. What was no, it in reference I, to? Uh, it sounds like apologetics because that, mere yes. Christianity and reflections on the existence of God. Well, yes, they're, Lee Strobel. They're, they're both. No. Mm -mm. I don't remember what the third one was. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, so I, I was troubling me earlier. Those things must trouble me. I'm usually um, troubled. Yeah. Mandy <laughs> Lowe invited Melissa to church. That's awesome. <gasps> That's so awesome. Oh, Happy yeah. cool. Melissa Legan, so glad you're feeling the to join us. I think we go one more question, and then we save the other ones for next week. Okay. What do you think, Pastor Randy? I'll do whatever you guys tell me to do. Okay. So why doesn't the church teach more about spiritual attacks to guard ourselves? Mm. Mm. <clears throat> when I saw that question, it created so many questions in my mind. You know, what does this person mean by spiritual attacks? Mm -hmm. What does this person mean by teaching to guard from spiritual attacks um, let, let, let's consider just quickly you, you know when you consider spiritual attacks um, second Corinthians 12 Paul gives an example of what we know to be a specific spiritual attack he's an apostle we can kind of trust him and he says that there was this angel dark angel that was specifically assigned to him to torment him and it appears that it was every time he would go to a place this angel Maybe stirs up the crowd. He gets beaten up, you know, stoned and these kinds of things. And he specifically asks the Lord three times, take this thorn out of my it away. And three times the Lord says, no, my grace is sufficient for you. The, the so, messenger of Satan. Yeah, the messenger of Satan it's called, <clears throat> to buffet me, to, you know, beat me around. Okay, so if here we have a case of a, a genuine spiritual attack. And how does Paul handle it? Well, first of all, he's not guarded against it, nor does Jesus guard him against it. In fact, Jesus says, this is good for you because this weakens you. And when you yeah. are weak, Paul concludes in the uh, verses 9 and 10, I found that I'm actually stronger. When I'm more uh, humble, when I'm more broken, when I'm more reliant on God, when I feel weakest, um, it appears, says Paul, the Spirit of God can use me more effectively. He says, therefore, I'll glory, I'll glory in my weaknesses, weaknesses which yeah. going back means I'll accept these continued attacks but they will not stop me. Come on. So when, when you assess spiritual attacks in Scripture, they are attacks specifically to silence us from proclaiming the message of Christ. I'm not sure if that's what this person means, or, or what do they mean? Do they mean like our cars keep breaking down, our kids keep getting mm -hmm. sick, um, you know, our plumbing keeps breaking down? Because in my mind, those are not attacks. There's nothing in Scripture that supports that those are considered attacks. So I would have to know more specifically, what are they calling an attack? Mm -hmm. How do they know it's an attack? And what do they mean by guard from an attack? Because I don't find anything in Scripture that says we are to say a certain prayer or do a certain thing to guard from an attack. What we are told in Scripture is that we can be strengthened to endure the attack and to not let the attack slow down our fervent uh, devotion to the cause of Christ, yeah. to the spreading of the gospel, to the building up of other people. So, so I would have to know more, but if there's this notion that there's some kind of a formulaic spiritual approach that we can protect ourselves, you know, encase ourselves yeah. from inconveniences in life, there mm -hmm. is no such thing taught. Jesus said in this world, you will have tribulation. You know, that was last night he's with us. So I, I don't mean to be antagonistic, but I, I need to know more of what this person means. <clears throat> are they yeah. are they referencing trying? And again, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they can enlighten us. Are they referencing trying to be cognizant of the fact that it's taken place? That we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I mean, is that what the person's thinking? Is anybody, P Pastor Kim? Do you? Well, this person is, says spiritual attacks, and, and it sounds as if they're actually 
they believe they are encountering that is the impression I got. Yeah, they did mention that their family is going through a yeah. spiritual attack. Their family so, is going through. So, so we don't I would know like what to that know, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What that, do you what do you mean by that? How, what are you interpreting as a spiritual attack? Right. Because scripture is is not uh, clear about these kinds of things. Yeah. The closest we have is what I just gave you. If you want to talk about spiritual attacks, look at the things that occur in the life of the Apostle Paul as he seeks to spread the gospel. He finds controversy, he finds shipwrecks, he finds snake bite, he mm -hmm. gets beaten up again and again, he gets in prison. You know, those are pretty Yeah, and, pretty and like clear. you say, I think it's a, a common thought today that many preachers and all kind of put out there that if you're if you have struggles in this life, trials and tribulation, then that's spiritual attack. Anything yes. negative that comes your way, that's spiritual attack. Yes. God doesn't want that, and you rebuke it in the name of Jesus. You yeah, know? there you go. Versus, there you go. no, this this life, and he that, said, you will be full of trouble. So we keep on trusting. Take heart, keep, for I've yeah. overcome the world. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so that's why, I don't know, you make a really good point. I, I get the feeling this person is maybe been around some of that kind of teaching Possibly, you, you yeah. know, but and going through some difficult times right now so it's just how yeah. to rightly navigate that as and a so, Christ follower so that, and, and it's a very different yeah. way that you navigate that that's where yeah. you, you draw close to God you, you remind yourself that he's trustworthy you remind yourself that God is working all things together for our good meaning our maturation our growth James our development. 1 that Pastor yeah, Pete yeah. his the favorite the trials of our faith are, are meant to mature us and count so count it all joy yeah, yeah. Well, I, don't li I don't like that part of that book, yeah. but, it, but it's, it's there no it but good. it's there and, and, and it helps when you're going through it and you can't get out of it yeah. <laughs> yeah. so with, uh there's reference to Ephesians six. Is is that is that what the person is referring to? To put on the full armor of God. Well, if, if you if you take it. Ephesians six, that doesn't uh, that doesn't point at specific individualized attacks that we can interpret as individualized attacks. It is talking about a general spiritual conflict, and of course, the way Paul goes on to talk about the pieces of armor, the way he fights the conflict is with the gospel. Mm -hmm. right. It is as we preach the message of Christ that we fight the battle. If if we're not sharing Christ with others, if we're not pushing forward the message of Christ, we're not even in the battle. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're just going to let us, the dark side will let us sit in our stupor because we're, we're no threat, you know. So, so spiritual six is not, or Ephesians six is not talking about mm -hmm. th this kind of a thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. We pose no threat to the gates of hell as a smiling church attender. Is that what you're, <laughs> right. that what you're saying? There you, there you go. go. There you go. There it is. There it is. Put on the whole armor of God. Spiritual warfare. Yeah, the spiritual warfare. That that one starts to get kind of. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Well, what, do you, what do you got? Like Star Wars? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, like I lightsabers? Love, love, <laughs> now there is, like you say, real an, angelic warfare, but yeah. we we have not been given enough of a glimpse into that. I guess God doesn't What's want to so? terrify us. <laughs> so go ahead. I have no idea. <laughs> I, no, I've thought about it a Are lot. Are Star Destroyers mm -hmm. a part of it? Star Destroyers? I don't part know of the it? answer. Mm -hmm. I, I know that it will reach a stage where it gets so physical, if that's a proper term, that um, the dark angels are forced down physically to this earth, and they're forced, I believe, into to take on physical form at that point. They lose their illusory nature. Ooh, <laughs> illusory! <laughs> That is a great adjectival word. <laughs> hey, here's one more question for you, Pastor Pete. Someone wants to recommend uh, some Christian musical artists that they can create a playlist of Christian songs. Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> oh, Sammy Davis Jr. The Candy Man the King. The Candy Man King. <laughs> the man king. Uh, I would need to know more. I'd need to know what your stylistic, what, what you like to listen to, because music is about as polarizing as any topic but that exists. throw out some of the just common ones that I we, mean, and Chris Tomlin and uh, Phil. Yeah, but I mean, so, so, but they can check them out and see. So Tomlin is like mainstream, what I would call CCM music mm -hmm. that is worship. If you're looking for like entertainment value music, um, there's a really good fusion band called Robert Randolph and the Family Band that are Christian guys and are just hmm. phenomenal. Switchfoot has been doing it forever. They're really good. Um, Toby Mac is more on the like the it's not R and I wouldn't quite call him R and B. He would be, but but along that genre, of Christian rap. I mean, if you like straight rap, Lecrae is probably the guy that is. See, so you know um, how you read into a question. Yes. So I read into the question 
This is someone who probably likes our music at church, and they want to download oh. some of the songs. I don't we even. Do. I don't even see where the question is. Where that, is I think this one got added. Can Can you recommend some Christian oh, yeah. musical artists? So when when I but think, I'm saying I'm, I'm just reading into yeah. it that this is probably some if they don't know Christian music, then they're probably hearing what they hear on Sundays and go. How do I create a down? Well, you're playlist? making the assumption that they like the music on Sundays. I'm making that's, a big, that's a, that's a big I think assumption. That's a pretty good assumption to make. So if you just were to say so a lot of the songs so worship music, do. yes, Tomlin. I mean, artists that I really like. There's a guy named Gunger that is not as popular. Is really phenomenal. He, He's a great he was in a time. He, yeah, his, mm-hmm. his he, Gunger Thunder. Exactly. Gunger Thunder. Um, um, he he was. Uh, I love Phil. He, he was Phil yeah. Wickham. 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 We do a lot of songs. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, he, elevation. He, he kind of had some. Uh, well, he some he art. was not a Trinitarian. Gunger. Is that true? I did not know that. But yeah, that's what at least he got a lot of heat about, it, and I think I think eventually it fleshed out him out to be true. Um, not that that. Hey, man, for the first three centuries, they were trying to debate on who who, stuff. who he was. Um, elevation is obviously yeah. great mainstream music. Um, there's another couple that um, I am blanking on their names, and I'm going to be, but you yeah. blanking I don't, on I a name. I, I was sick <laughs> I have earlier never, this week. Ever <laughs> my, in my, the time that I've known you, seen this happen? My fire, <laughs> my fire's a little dull. <laughs> That's remarkable. I've had a stressful couple of days, if I'm honest. <laughs> and stress. You want to knock me down? Stress. There has you a, go. Brandon Lake. Melissa put in there. Brandon Lake is really good. She's yeah. coming to the rescue. Oh man, it was just right there. But it starts with a B. Um, <laughs> stop it. We're we're actually past our time. Oh, well past <laughs> our time. And now you now. So the good question. We there's some still some good questions. One on paradise, the book of Enoch. We'll get these next week. Assuming so, that we remember the ones. That I, we've I'm covered. gonna I'm gonna keep them. Okay. All right. I'm gonna keep them right there. But all right, but bunions. Oh, what is that? Bunions. Bunions. John bunions. Bunion. Paul Bunion. No. Bunions on your feet. I've never heard Stop. of that group. All right, give me a second. So, Pastor Randy, while he thinks on that, he is starting a new series <laughs> called Turning. Oh, crush Points. it! Yeah, yeah. It's a Sunday. series called Turning Points, and I actually have two parts. And I'm not sure I'll do the parts back to back. But um, Turning Points is the notion that if you've lived long enough, you um, you usually will have a time of reflection at some point in your life where you start to just contemplate, how did I get here? Uh, what what was the path? What did it look like? What were the what were the junctures? Binions. Where <laughs> their name is Binion. I wonder Binion. Binion is pretty close. It is. It yeah. is. There it is. I can I can look I can look at I'll find their first and la- first and first both the couple's He's first name, but so, no, not at all. Go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's, completely it's, tuned me it's out. the it's the notion <laughs> that our <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> we reach a point when our so anyway. Um, like, how do we get here? Sometimes it's occurrences that are out of our control. Sometimes it's people we meet. Sometimes it's decisions we make. But when we look back, we realize, man, the um, the course of our life, the trajectory of our life, started to change, and now that led to this, the other, and, and so the value is that we can sometimes start to appreciate how even in those mis uh, miscues, call them. God was still with us. He was still at work. He he, he was still. Thankful. He he wants to take those hard learned lessons, and now redeem them and help us through 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 humble uh, willingness to to correct, to kind of develop Christ like characteristics and so forth. So you can also see sometimes a pattern from the past that you'll recognize when you might be entering into a turning point in the present. Come on. I have to say that's that's not. Highly likely, uh, you have to, in my opinion, you have to live a lot of years before you can detect that pattern. But nevertheless, there, there, there's value it's in seeing. after in the, in the middle, you just think it's yeah. hardship. Yeah, and, and then the last thing I would say is that the the goal that I have in this series is is to elevate the appreciation of the the activity of God as being so consistent in our lives, and we don't always recognize it. Mm. We don't always see it when it's occurring. And so to elevate that awareness that God is really active in our lives, I, I think that makes for a very exciting walk with, with the Lord on a day-to-day. No matter what the season is that we're going through in life, we, mm-hmm. we can recognize that, no, nah, this, there's something going on here and God's with me. It's, it's, it's going to be a real adventure, but that's okay. You know, so, you know it me up. I was listening to a, a buddy of mine who's a, a communicator at a, a, a 
a larger church actually in Florida called Grace City. And he got up, and as the closing of his message, he shared a poem. Mm -mm. The poem was called Footprints in the Sand. No way. And when he, when he said he was going to share it, I literally thought that he was joking. I thought it was a joke. I laughed out loud driving in my car, listening to my buddy. Mm -hmm. And now his demographic is, he's, Andrew's probably 39, he's somewhere between 39 and 40. So to him it was new, is what you're trying to say. No, to him it wasn't new, but his audience. To this audience his, So I'm new. curious, okay. there are two in the room. Um, the two ladies that are in the room, are that, you familiar with Footprints in the Sand? Yes, no. See? How about that? See? Look at that. See? And so you, you should check it out. It's good. It, it is actually really good. good. The first time you read it, you're like, oh, wow, it that's, a, that's a really cool. I'm yeah. curious. I would bet you our demographic, actually, on, I'm, not, I'm confident, the platform that we are on, the demographic says that you are of the age yeah. that I referenced or older. If you were different, you would be on Periscope. It's the same else. group who doesn't know wow. Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, this, this is opening up a whole new vista because I yeah. can go back and grab yes. old material and start Easily. over. Yeah. It's all new. It's all I'm new. Curious I on, have lived so long. I'm curious <laughs> online if you, if you know, I, but, I, but I think that you do. I think almost yeah. all of you online. But it cracked me up. And I actually called and was joking with him about it. Yeah. And he said, man. They didn't even know it. So he, his, he, his, he could um, be all dramatic with it and everything. <laughs> yes, yes. And, awesome. and he said it landed really well. They do, you talk about, like, our, we were, had a meeting yesterday with our, our architect and look at the building oh, for the future. They do, anyways, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna break out Schindler's list soon. <laughs> <laughs> I could have right. done more. I could have done, done more. <laughs> oh, that would be a great illustration. Uh, oh, man. Um, all right. I saw Aunt yes, Wanda yes, on there, yes. so can we all say hi oh, to Aunt Wanda? Oh, Aunt Wanda. Come Aunt Wanda. on. Come on. And my sis. Is your sis out there with her still? I, she's still out there. I don't know if she's oh, watching, too. man, but... gallivanting around. Yeah. Spending gamble, all, gamble, gamble. Spending all, all of Aunt Wanda's <laughs> money. Let's just finish these last couple comments. The answer I'm looking for, it's, it's Nicole and... Uh, uh, Binion. Binion is their last name, and they're they're less well known. But David, Nicole, and David Binion. Here we go. There it is. This is gonna drive me crazy. Uh, Mitty Bob from the woman who wrote the poem. Why she wrote it? It's a beautiful story. Oh, I didn't know that. I gotta check that out, Mandy. Uh, yes, know the poem. I have gotten me so consistently in my life. After the loss of my husband, my walk is totally mm. different now. Yeah, that's awesome. Victor, amen. This year I retired after going 200 miles per hour with my hair on fire traveling <laughs> the whole world. That is true. Victor, I don't even know how, how much I'm allowed to say. That's great. He, he worked for a Perfecto, but okay. is a, a project mm -hmm. manager. I mean, be bigger than a project manager, but oversees billion dollar infrastructure in the Middle East. Ooh, wow. So he, in places wow. where he was not able to profess that he was a Christ follower, yeah. he was considered the infidel. Depending on what wow. you said and how you acted, you could be killed. Mm. Um, really, really wild and lived out his faith as a part of that. Uh, plus my MS got worse, much worse. So wow. now I'm asking him, what now, where do I go from here? Mm -hmm. Amen, Victor. Praying that with you, buddy. Praying that with you. Yeah, Victor is an incredible guy. Great with money. Great financial mind. And Joy, his wife, lovely people. Love Shelly. Lo They're in my neighborhood. Shelly here too. Oh, Miss Wanda's saying she loves <laughs> Shelly being down there. I didn't see who was right. I was Shelly here too. Love hey, Shelly here too. My sister. Well, and you wouldn't know. You, you, you could just say love Shelly here too and then a heart at the end. But you wouldn't put the love, love Shelly here. The emoji is supposed to replace <laughs> the adjectival okay. word. She's, she's Wanda. 87 years old. <laughs> so she best. can put her heart <laughs> wherever she wants. She can put it any way she that wants. She's on. Right. Love you, Aunt Wanda. Soon to be 88. <laughs> and on that note, 9 15, 11 15, I am pumped. I, I mean, are you excited about the new series? I am because I Man, knew what it was. It's going to be good. No, no, I saw. I saw. Oh. I I was hung up on the tipping point thing yeah. in my head when you said that earlier. But yeah, we we even look at the graphic for that's right. Yeah, probably and the, and I don't know video. three yeah. months. We had it on the screen last night. Well, I I third. gamble gamble I'm, gamble. I'm happy to hear you you've been looking at it. <laughs> well, we ended up adding um, the initial graphic didn't have some of the arrows on it, so we added some arrows at the top and arrows on the side. Okay. okay. Some across. people talk with their hands. Pastor Pete talks with his fingers. Because it's not just his hands moving, like his fingers do things. <laughs> well, I'm oh, like, it's on a guitar. It's a guitar. Yeah, guitar it's a guitar stuff. thing. I'm so like Will Ferrell. You, you play keyboard some too, right? 
play a little keyboard. I'm no Leo, but I can. I hold it down. I hold it down. But yes. You play I drums too, right? I play drums poorly. <laughs> yes, play the clarinet? I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> All right. We will see you. All right. I'm, I'm crumpling this one up. You got to print me another for next week. Okay. Throw your water bottle. <laughs> Here, boss. I'll give you. I'll give no, you this. No, 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 no. Because you were close last time. Why? Well, you were closer than I was. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take that. <gasps> oh! He nailed it. Well, oh! He nailed it. Look! Dang. Oh <laughs> man! Oh! Two for two. And oh. you don't have a piece of paper. <laughs> oh man! The pressure is. The yes, it is. Oh, yes, it, it is. Heat right is on. <laughs> See, I'm gonna use this. That way, if I miss, I have an excuse. I threw a water bottle. Oh! It was all right. Give me, give me a piece of paper. See if I can do better with a piece of paper. Write down that. Write down that. One of those. You know, it's, then it's just over two. Were you, you in a rush? You want that, well, that, that sandwich? That, that sandwich hey, is calling my name. Calling. <laughs> oh, uh, too low again. All right, we love you. Nine fifteen, love you. Love you.